Welcome guys. Uh, so in this video, uh, we will prove this no deleting theorem. Uh, okay, so before we prove it, uh, there is a, a similar theorem called the non cloning theorem. Uh, so I search for Wikipedia and uh, we find that Wikipedia proof is a little bit different from the uh, original that uh, like the uh, Nielsen and Trump proof. So let's just compare it. But I think it's similar. Okay, so. Uh, I mean, it, I mean, based on how to how to define a so-called the uh, cloning. Okay, so the standard proof is that uh, there is a uh, no unitary such that H, right? H is a complex, uh, finite-dimensional complex Hilbert space, made to H tensor H. Okay, so let's assume that you have unitary and linear matrix. By the way, linear matrix unitary transformation is only defined when uh, transformation is linear. Okay. So u phi is defined to be uh, phi phi. So basically, you can cloning phi. Okay. So uh, it's obvious this is trivial because u zero will be mapped to zero zero. U one will be mapped to one one, and the u alpha zero plus beta one should be. Uh, by this is the linearity will give you alpha zero zero plus beta one one. Okay. So uh, because you should be linear, but this is not the same as alpha zero uh, plus beta one. Uh, tensor alpha zero plus beta one because this is alpha square zero zero plus alpha beta zero one plus beta alpha one zero beta square one one. Okay, so no such you exist. And the wiki proof is somehow like also uh, famous in other like textbook. Let's say uh, you added a blank state or basically or okay. So what? I mean any state e. Okay. So if it so if you define a uh, Unitary such that uh, you hope that unitary will give you this phi e will give you phi phi okay, and uh, there will be a phase so it's more general than uh, the, this guy okay. But uh, it's also impossible because if you calculate the uh, phi and psi e, e and you separate into two parts and uh, you you say that you use unitary right so if you uh, so you can insert this unitary and then it become this guy and then finally become this guy okay. So if you see this then you will get the uh, uh, phi and psi square will be phi and psi square absolute value. So this means that they're orthogonal. Okay, or they're orthogonal, or they are uh, exactly the same. Okay, so this cannot be arbitrary space. Therefore, a single unitary, a single universal U cannot clone general corner states. So the idea is that no such U exists. So basically, uh, this uh, this type of proof somehow like, generalizes this type of U, right? Because this is U is very restricted, but now this U can be worked for arbitrary uh, band state E, and also there is a phase that you can choose. Uh, right, if you take absolute value, then yeah, you get it. So you just take absolute value, okay? So uh, in this video, the point is that we prove this similar called no deleting de 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 theorem, and it's like a no-go theorem in the quantum information. Oh, so what? There are many no-go theorem in uh, physics, like a string theory or something. Okay, so uh, let's see. So no deleting theorem means that uh, there's no u such that uh, phi phi a. So now you ha we we can we have three copies here per space. No u such that uh, okay psi psi a will give you psi zero a prime. Okay, so basically the idea is that uh, <coughs> uh, let's assume that you you have the same copy of quantum state psi psi a, and then you try to delete one of them, right? So you preserve one, and then you uh, so the the second the B system is already eliminated and it become A prime. Okay, so the important part is that uh, <coughs> when when we say deleting, we hope that is actual real actual deleting. So the importance is that A prime cannot contains the information of psi, right? A A prime cannot cannot contain information of psi. Otherwise, there's no deleting. Otherwise, that uh, you can just swap. Otherwise, you can just let A equal to zero and define U to be swap B and C. Then you will still, then you then you can always get here, right? So the theorem is that uh, no such U exist. Uh, since A prime will de depend on psi, so we will prove that uh, this A prime will somehow encode in the information of psi. Okay. So otherwise, this is no actual deleting. So as I said, if you just define that, uh, so basically, if you uh, you can define that uh, you eliminate, you can define that A to be zero, and the U act on psi psi zero will be psi zero psi. Then it looks like it satisfies this uh, definition, but it's no actual deleting. So for actual deleting, the A prime cannot contain the information of psi. At least you cannot recover all the psi from A prime. Okay. So the proof is I already write down details. The proof is that uh, supposedly, so we by definition, right? We know that u zero zero a. Well, let's say u zero zero a zero. U one one a become one zero a one, right? By definition. So let's say psi will be alpha zero plus beta one. So using the same trick. 
So size size a by definition will be alpha square zero zero a plus alpha beta zero one a plus beta one one zero a plus beta square one one a. Okay, so let's apply u. You got alpha square. So the first term is linearity, right? So you put zero zero a zero plus beta square one zero a one plus alpha beta. Let's say u zero one a plus beta alpha u one zero a. Okay, so by definition, this u psi psi a should be psi zero a prime, right? By by the our definition here. So let's uh, let phi to be this cross term. So phi will be one over square root two one zero a and a zero one uh, zero one a and a one zero a. Okay, so compare these two. Uh, we have this guy. Le this guy should be should say the same as this guy, right? So this guy is this guy should same as the definition of psi zero a prime so it's alpha zero zero a prime plus beta one uh, beta one zero a prime so this is the key identity that we will spoil right we will use to uh get an information okay so uh let's assume a prime to be uh c a zero plus d a one okay no, no nobody can stop me to do this okay okay so alpha square zero zero a zero will be plus beta square one zero a one plus the square root alpha beta u phi will be let's say will be this right so zero zero a prime one zero a prime. So if I uh, expand it, I get c alpha zero zero a zero plus alpha d zero zero a one plus c beta one zero a zero plus beta one one a one. So uh, now this c d should be function of alpha beta, right? It is similar. But uh, if you let beta equal to zero, then this term vanish. This term vanish. Uh, these two terms vanish, right? So you get alpha square zero zero a zero must be equal to c alpha zero zero a zero plus alpha d zero zero a one. So if you compare this, then it tell you that the uh, c must equal to alpha when beta equals zero, and the same reason is that d must equal to beta when alpha equals zero. So it's easy to guess that the uh, c must be alpha, d must be beta, because alpha and beta can be arbitrary. Okay, but if this is the case, then uh, these two terms, this c alpha and uh, this cross term cancel these two. So you get square root of alpha beta u phi will be uh, this d is beta, right? So alpha beta zero zero a one, and the beta is and the c is alpha, right? You get beta alpha one zero a zero. So you uh, you can delete this square uh, alpha beta. Okay, so maybe maybe let me just add some details. Otherwise, it looks uh, terrible. Ter sorry, terrible to see. Okay, right. So if if this guy is true, right? If you pull back, then you can see these two terms. If these four terms cancel, so you leave as this. Then you cancel alpha beta. So you get u phi is one over square root of alpha zero zero a one plus one zero a a zero, and also your a prime, yeah, right? By your a prime, uh, your a prime is to be this, right? So this is uh, the proof is ended. Okay, so uh, why why proof is ended, right? Because uh, what your your original size like alpha zero plus beta one, right? But after you deleting, right? You start from size size, uh, size size. A right, you become like the size zero uh, a prime, right? But this a prime is actually alpha a zero plus beta one. So that means what? That means actually, uh, that means you actually you can recover, you can recover this psi from alpha and beta. Okay, so basically you can you you can recover this say this psi from reading this alpha and beta. So that means the information is not actually deleting because. It seems like that you are just swap this this some psi information and uh, put all this psi information into other part a a a prime. So as the as we prove that if you want to prove that there's actual deleting, then uh, this a prime cannot depend on psi. At least you cannot recover all of it, right? But now you have alpha to alpha coefficient and beta. Once you read the alpha and beta, then actually you can reconstruct psi. So the information is not actually deleting. So this is the theorem of no uh, deleting theorem. Uh, this is the theorem of no deleting theorem. Okay, uh, so the proof is a little bit cumbersome, uh, but it's similar to the uh, the standard no cloning theorem. So I hope you guys uh, love this video. Uh, be sure to uh, be sure to what? Be sure to subscribe to my channel. I will see you guys in the next videos.